let me share my screen. Um, so in today's class, as mentioned, we'll be going with networking fundamentals, guys. And again, I think uh, some of you from the Zoom link have joined my demo earlier as well. I'm not sure if all of you were there or not. Okay, but no worries. Okay, so this will also act as a demo for you. Well, in our course, Certified Ethical Hacking, we're going to go with the first topic today, Networking Fundamentals. This is a very important prerequisite for cybersecurity, understanding what networks are and how do devices communicate with each other on various networks, okay? And what primarily are IP addresses, okay? So this concept of IP addresses is very important to understand because in the upcoming sessions, when we work with log files, when we work, work with attacks or trying to figure out what these attacks are, and where these attacks are initiating from. In those logs, you notice these IP addresses. So by looking at an IP, it's very important to understand which category does it fall under, okay? So there's multiple categories in IPs. We'll come to that, okay? So yeah, let's get started. When you talk about networking fundamentals, there are three important definitions to know. What is networking? What are networks? And what are hosts? When you talk about networking, this is the practice of connecting information devices with each other. And why would you do that? In order to share resources or data with each other again. So your information devices could be anything. They could be your laptops, your smartphones, your printers, your IP cameras, et cetera, et cetera. So when you want to share data or again, resources from one device to the other device, they need to be connected with each other. So that practice of connecting these information devices with each other is called as networking, okay? And that group of devices or the collection of those interconnected devices is called as a network, okay? And in that network, each device, each individual information system is called as a host. So a host refers to any device connected to a network that can transmit or receive data, okay? And again, as mentioned, there are multiple instances or examples of hosts. Your smartwatches, your PlayStation devices, your earphones, your cameras, your Bluetooth headphones, okay, your smart speakers, your IP cameras, your mobile phones, your printers, your routers, your databases, your web servers. There are tons and tons of devices, okay, information systems, okay. And the practice of connecting all those devices together to have, again, transmission of data is called as networking. And that group of devices is called as a network, okay. Now, just like how we humans have our own names to communicate with each other or address each other, we can, again, you can call me by my name and I can call you by your name respectively. Similarly, these devices also have names to address each other. And that name is called as an IP address, Internet Protocol Address. Okay. So this Internet Protocol Address was built by the US military in the early 1950s or so. And there were multiple versions of it. There was Internet Protocol version 1, Internet Protocol version 2, or in short, called as IPv2, and then IPv3 as well. These were not successful. They didn't work out properly. What successfully worked out was IPv4, Internet Protocol version 4. And we're still using these IPv4 addresses even in today's world. Okay. To define what an IP address is, each unique device, okay. so each host or unique device on the network has a unique identifier. Okay. And that unique name or identifier is called as an IP address. And these IP addresses allow for communication to occur between these devices. And this IPv4 address specifically has a few important properties to it. Firstly, this is a 32-bit address. What I mean by 32-bit is that it contains 32 zeros and ones. A bit is the smallest data value a computer can hold or any information system can hold. It can either be the value of zero or the value of one, okay? And your IPv4 address is a combination of 32 zeros and ones. And that entire 32-bit address is not uh, by itself. It is again divided in four equal parts, okay? So each part is called as an octet and each part consists of that 8-bit portion, okay? So that 8-bit portion is called as an octet, okay? And each octet again is separated by a dot symbol, okay? So this is what your typical IPv4 address would look like, okay, in the binary or the, in the format of zeros and ones, okay. But we humans don't easily understand this language, the binary language. What we regularly use are decimal numbers or the decimal language. So this number 
one one zero 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 can actually be converted to human readable number called one ninety two. Okay, then this number one zero one zero one zero 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 can actually be converted to something as one sixty eight. All zeros is simply zero, and then zero 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 one zero one zero is equal to ten. But the main question that arises here is how am I converting these numbers? How do you any or how does anyone convert binary number to a human readable decimal number? So that's what we're going to discuss now. Okay. Before we get into that, any questions or doubts up to this point? Priyadarshini, Sumit, Vaibhav, Mastanwali, Sorry. and uh, Priyanka and Sanya as well. Any questions, guys? Okay. Priyanka, any questions? No. Uh, I have no questions. No, no, so, oh, okay. Mastan, no questions. Sumit, any questions? Okay. Priyadarshi, no questions. As well. Perfect. Everyone has all clear. Right. Perfect. So let's get into the conversion part. How do you convert any binary number to a human readable decimal number? And why is this important? I'll explain that as well. Why do you need to learn this conversion? Okay. So to understand this conversion, I want to take a very simple binary number here. 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So you can see this is an octet. Octet in the sense 8 bits. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when you want to convert any binary octet as such to a human readable decimal number, then there are two simple rules to it. Rule number one is you write down all the values of 2 power from right to left under each bit. So under the rightmost bit, you have, you have 2 power 0, then you have 2 power 1, then 2 power 2, then 2 power 3, then 2 power 4, then 2 power 5, then 2 power 6, and then 2 power 7. So from right to left, you starting, I mean, you start from 2 power 0 and go all the way up to 2 power 7. Okay. Once these values are written down, then you multiply the lower value with the top bit and you keep on adding it till the end. 2 power 0, into 0 plus 2 power 1 into 1 plus 2 power 2 into 0 plus 2 power 3 into 1 plus 2 power 4 into 0 plus 2 power 5 into 1 plus 2 power 6 into 0 plus 2 power 7 into 1. So this is a simple procedure to convert any binary number to a human readable decimal number. No matter what the number is, you write down the values of 2 power from right to left. And once those values are written, you multiply the lower value, that lower two power value, to the top bit and keep on adding it till the end. Okay. So before we convert this, let's write down the values of these numbers first. Anything to the power zero is always equal to one. It's a mathematical rule. So similarly, two power zero is also equal to one. Two power one is two itself. Two power two is like two into two. That's four. Two power three is two into two into two. Three times. That's eight. 2 power 4 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. That's 16. 2 power 5 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. 5 times. That's 32. 2 power 6 is 64. And 2 power 7 is 120. Now, once you have these values, 2 power 0 into 0. 2 power 0 is 1. So, 1 into 0, 0 again. 2 power 1 into 1, that's 2 into 1. That's 2. 2 power 2 into 0, 0 again. 2 power 3 into 1, 8. 2 power 4 into 0, 0 again. 2 power 5 into 1, 32. 2 power 6 into 0, 0 again. And 2 power 7 into 1, 128. So these are the values. And if I add all this up, 128 plus 32, that's 160. 160 plus 8, 168. 168 plus 2, 170. So when we humans read the number 170 as 170, the computer understands it as 10101010. One is something like high frequency and 0 is something like low frequency. So high, low, high, low, high, low, high. When that exact sequence of frequencies flow through a computer, it understands it as the value 170. Okay. Is that clear, everyone? Any questions or doubts up to this point on how to convert any binary number to a human readable decimal number? Okay. Assuming no questions. Now ask two other numbers here, guys. 01010101 and all ones. And what I want you to do is convert these numbers now to decimal numbers and give me the answers for them. So if you have a pen and a paper beside you, let's get calculated. Okay. So take your time, no rush. Okay. Use the same exact logic and convert these numbers 01010101 01, 01, 01, 
and all ones from binary to decimal. Okay. You can give me the answers in the chat. <laughs> Got one number or one answer as 128. Okay, we'll check that. Priyanka and Sanya, I want you to calculate as well. And you can place the answers in the chat box or you can let me know. Hello. Take your time, no rush, guys. Oh, okay, correct answers, Sumit. You have given the right answers. Mm. For both of them. Mm. Correct answer, Priyanka, for the first one. Any other answers, guys? Anyone? Okay. So while you're calculating, let me also calculate for the first one simultaneously. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So 2 power 0 into 1 plus 2 power 1 into 0 plus 2 power 2 into 1 plus 2 power 3 into 0 plus 2 power 4 into 1 plus 2 power 5 into 0 plus 2 power 6 into 1 plus 2 power 7 into 0. Okay. Yeah, almost all of you have given the correct answers, guys. Right? So now, simple calculation. 2 power 0 into 1, that's 1. 2 power 1 into 0, 0. 2 power 2 into 1, 4. 2 power 3 into 0, 0. 2 power 4 into 1, 16. 2 power 5 into 0, 0. 2 power 6 into 1, 64. 2 power 7 into 0, 0. And if you add all this up, 64 plus 16, that's 80. 80 plus 4, 84. 84 plus 1, 85. So correct answers, guys. Okay. Similarly, for the second one, when you have all ones, you add all the numbers. So 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Okay. Because it's into 1 everywhere. Okay. And when you add all these numbers, you get 255 as the second answer. Okay. So the first value is 85. Second number is 255. Okay. And I've got correct answers from a lot of you guys. Right. Perfect. Now, why am I explaining this? Why do we need to learn this conversion? So from this conversion itself, we can actually understand the range of IP of the six keys. So if I had to get the first IP, all I have to do is simply put zeros everywhere. In the first octet, all zeros. In the second octet, all zeros. In the third octet, all zeros. And in the fourth octet, as well, all zeros. And when you have zeros everywhere, the first IP in decimal value would also be 0 dot, 0 dot, 0 dot, 0. Okay, and if I had to get the last IP, any guesses? How do we get the last IP? Put all ones everywhere. Okay, because that's the maximum number you can get. So when you put all ones, the maximum you get is 255. So the last IP would be 255.255.255.255. So from this conversion, now we got to know what's the first IP and what's the last IP. And now we logically know why IPs cannot exceed 255. Because when you put all ones, the maximum it can go up to is 255 itself, not more than that. So you would never have an IP in the numbers above 255. Okay. So an IP like uh, 300, something like 300, 200, 100, 500, this is an invalid IP. Okay. You would never have an IP in the numbers above 255. 
Okay, so that's an important point to note. <laughs> okay, now one now we know this is the first IP. We know what this is the last IP. But how many IPs are there in total? So to understand that, there's a very simple calculation. Okay, each binary bit here has two values, either a zero or a one. Okay, and there are thirty-two bits in total. So two possibilities here into two possibilities here into two possibilities here into two into two into two into two into two into two like that thirty-two times. So the total number of IPs you would get is two raised to the power of thirty-two, and that would be closely equal to 4.3 billion IP addresses, approximately. Okay. So the total number of IPs from the first IP to the last IP is 4.3 billion IPs. So back then in 1950s or so, when these IP addresses were invented, they thought 4.3 billion IPs is a very huge number and that would be sufficient for the rest of eternity. Because back then you had no mobile phones, rarely did people have access to the internet. Owning a computer was a fortune. Okay. But fast forward to 2024, even small kids have mobile phones in their hands. Okay, Each person can have multiple devices. So the population itself is 8 billion people. And if each person on a rough average, if he has at least two devices, you would still need 16 billion IPs. But all we have is 4.3 billion IPs. Okay, So that's why the people who invented IPs again started dividing these IPs in various categories. So there's something called as public IPs and private IPs, and then there's something called classes. Okay. So don't worry, we'll talk about those categories as well in depth. Okay. But before we get into those categories, let's talk about the sequence of IPs. So we know this is the first IP. We know this is the last IP. What about the IPs in between? What about the sequence of IPs in between? Okay. So to understand the sequence of IPs, we have two simple rules again. Okay. Rule number one, you always start incrementing from the rightmost option. What do I mean by that? So, for example, if I open up a notepad file here, just a second, yeah. So, we know we have the first IP as 0, 0, 0, 0. And if you wanted to get the next IP, rule number one is always start incrementing or increasing by the value of one from the rightmost option. So after 0, 0, 0, 0, next IP would be 0, 0, 0, 1. Next, 0, 0, 0, 2. Next, 0, 0, 0, 3. Next, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8, 0, 9, 0, 10, 0, 11, 0, 12. This goes on all the, all the way up to 0, 0, 0, 2, 53, 2, 54, 2, 55. Now, can we have an IP like 0, 0, 0, 2, 56? Is this possible after 2, 55? No, sir. Definitely not. Right. So after 255, here comes rule number two. So once the rightmost octet reaches the maximum value, then you move to the left octet. So this 255 cycles back to zero again. And this left octet now changes to one. Okay. So after 0, 0, 0, 2, 5, 5, you have 0, 0, 1, 0. Now don't directly jump to 0, 0, 2, 0 after this. That would be wrong. Okay. Remember rule number one? always increment from the rightmost octet. So after one zero, you have one one again. One two, one three, one four, one five, one six, one seven, one eight, one nine. Goes all the way up to one two five five. Then you have two zero. Okay. Which again goes up to two one, two two, two three, two four, two five, two six, goes up to two two five five. Then three zero, which goes up to three two five five. Four zero, which goes up to four two five five. Five zero, which goes up to five two five five. So if you see there's a pattern for me here. 0, 0 to 0, 2, 5, 5. 1, 0 to 1, 2, 5, 5. 2, 0 to 2, 2, 5, 5. 3, 0 to 3, 2, 5, 5. 4, 0 to 4, 2, 5, 5. Like that, the sequence keeps on repeating. And down the line, somewhere you'll have 2, 5, 4, 0 to 2, 5, 4, 2, 5, 5. 2, 5, 5, 0 to 2, 5, 5, 2, 5, 5. Okay. Both these octets are filled, so they become zeros again. And the zero now changes to 1. Okay. And whatever sequence repeated from 0, 0, 0 to 0, 2, 5, 5, 2, 5, 5, same sequence repeats again from 1, 0, 0 to 1, 2, 5, 5, 2, 5, 5. Okay, just one second. Uh, 
Now, apologies about that. I'm a bit of a cool, right? So again, as mentioned over here, so after one zero zero, again you have zero one zero two zero three goes up to zero two five five. Then one zero one 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 two one three goes up to one two five five. So like that, the sequence keeps on repeating, and somewhere down the line you would have two five five zero to two five five two five five. Okay. So whatever cycle repeated from zero 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 to zero two five five two five five. Repeats from one zero zero to one two five five two five five, two zero zero to two two five five two five five, three zero zero to three two five five two five five, four zero zero to four two five five two five five. Okay, five zero zero to five two five five two five five, six zero zero six two five five two five five. Like that it keeps on repeating, and down the line you would have two five three zero zero to two fifty three two five five two five five, two five four zero zero. To two five four two five five two five five, two five five zero zero to two five five two five five two five five. All these three octets are full. What happens next? They cycle back to zeros, and this last zero changes to one. Okay. Now, finally, whatever repeated all the way from zero 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 to zero two five five two five five two five five, same thing again repeats from one zero zero zero. To one two five five two five five two five five. Okay, so you have one zero 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 here. Again, the zero zero changes to zero one zero two zero three zero four. Same cycle repeats again. Up to one two five five two five five two five five. Again, two zero 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 to two two five five two five five two five five. Three zero 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 to three two five five two five five two five five. And down the line, two five five zero 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 to two five five two five five two five five two five five. Okay. Here's the first IP, and here's the last IP. Okay, and if you count each and every single IP that way, one after the other, you would have a total of 4.3 billion IP addresses. I know I definitely skipped a lot of IPs in between. Again, it's not practically possible for me to count all of them, but yeah, that is how the sequence flows. Okay. Any questions? Any doubts up to this point? Anyone? Priyanka. Yeah. Sanya and uh, others, Mastanwali, Naresh, Priyadarshini, Sumit, Vaibhav. Right. Others, Naresh, Johnson, Priyadarshini. Hi, Johnson. I think you have joined a bit late. Uh, might seem a bit confusing. But don't worry, you'll be getting the recordings for all of these sessions, guys. So, again, if you have missed out anything, you can always go through the recording and, again, get back to me if you have any questions as well. Okay? So, yeah, moving on. So, as mentioned, that is the entire name of IPs and the sequence, guys. Priyanka, Sanya, any questions? Yeah, okay, guys. So that's the entire sequence of IPs as mentioned. Moving on, as mentioned, this entire sequence of IPs, these 4.3 billion IPs again, are divided in categories. So there are five classes first. Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D, and Class E. So the entire 4.3 billion IPs are divided in five categories for classes. And again, each of these classes is divided in two subcategories. So Class A has public and private IPs. Class B also has public and private IPs. Class C also has public and private IPs. Class B and Class E are exceptions. They do not have any private IPs. All of them are public IPs itself. Okay. But what are these classes and what are public and private IPs? So we'll talk about public and private IPs in today's class. Okay. And in the next session, we'll talk about these classes as well, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. So to understand public and private IPs, let me use a very simple diagram. Okay, so let's assume this is our home network. Now in our home network, when we want to access the internet, most of our cases are where we have a Wi-Fi router in our home. Okay, and this Wi-Fi router wirelessly provides internet to all the other devices. Okay, so you might have devices like your laptops, your smartwatches, your smartphones, your smart TVs, whatnot. Okay, so each of these devices is our own local area network devices. So this is our home network, our own private network, 
which is also commonly known as an intranet. So intranet is basically a local private network. Okay. So when you want communication to occur between any of these local devices, then for that you need something called private IPs. Private IPs are the IPs used in a local area network in your own intranet. And these allow for these local devices to communicate with each other. So if you want to share a file from your phone to your laptop or from your laptop to your smart TV or so, you can do it over the local area network IPs, over the private IPs. Okay. So you can create a shared folder in your laptop and you can access that shared folder through its IP with other devices. Okay. You can share and I mean share these resources easily from one device to the other device using your private IPs. Okay. But when any of these devices wants to communicate with the internet, let's say, so when your phone or when your laptop wants to communicate with a website like google.com, that Google website is on a web server and that web server is on a public network. Okay. That entire public network is called the internet itself. Okay. So when your Wi-Fi router is installed, there's a guy coming from the ISP, internet service provider. So in India, we have ISPs like Airtel, Act Fibernet, Hathaway, BSNL, etc., etc. In US, you have ISPs like AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, etc., etc. Okay. So these ISPs, also known as internet service providers, provide you the service of internet through a public IP. So your Wi-Fi router gets a cable from outside the house. It could be an RJ45 cable or an optical fiber cable, but definitely you get a cable from outside the house connecting to your Wi-Fi router. That cable carries the public IP. So your house, your Wi-Fi router gets a public IP. And using that public IP, each of these devices shares it and accesses the internet field. Okay. So oh, I'm still unclear of class amount. Were well, you're unclear about the price is what you're saying, Johnson? Class amount in the sense. Hmm. Hello. Are you asking the price for the course, Johnson? Oh, I'm going to discuss this at the end of the class, Johnson. I'll come back to all such queries by the end of this class. Right. So yeah, coming back to this public and private IPs as mentioned. So in any device, when you want communication to occur in these local area network devices, you need private IPs for that. Okay. And when any of these devices wants to communicate with the internet, for that you need a public IP. So your ISP, your internet service provider, Airtel, Act Fibernet, Hathaway, or whatever it is, they provide a cable to you. Okay. So to your house, you get a cable from outside your house connecting to your Wi-Fi router. That cable is provided by the ISP and through that cable, you get the public IP. Okay. So public IPs are the IP addresses allocated by the ISP internet service provider to access the internet. Okay. So when you want to access any website that is based on the internet, you need a public IP for that. Okay. So to define public IPs, again, going one slide back, public IPs are the globally unique IP addresses which are used to identify individual devices on the public internet. They are allocated by the internet service provider and they are reachable or routable over the internet. So when you want to connect to the internet, you always need a public IP for that. Okay. And if you want to figure out what your public IP is, what is the IP given to your router, you can open up your browser and search for what is my IP. So if you do a simple search here, what is my IP? This is the public IP that my system is getting. So this public IP was provided to me by my ISP, internet service provider. So as you can see, my ISP is Beam Telecom, okay, which is Act 5 minute, okay. And this is the public IP provided to my home, okay, in India, okay. Uh, one second. Excuse me. Mm. Has been a bit sick today. But yeah, again, when you talk about the private IPs on the other hand, these are the IPs used in your local network. So within your private networks, within your home network, your office network, organizations, et cetera, et cetera. For your local communication, you use private IPs. Okay. These private IPs are not directly accessible from the internet. So you cannot use private IPs to connect to the internet directly. Okay. You need a public IP for that. Okay. These private IPs only allow devices within the same local network to communicate with each other. Okay. And if you want to check your system's private IP, you can go to your command from CMD command from, and you can run a command called IP config. Again, you get some, you can see the private IP here. 
192.168.0.5. Okay. So now don't worry, guys. Don't get confused on why I'm getting this IP exactly here, 192.168 here. And why am I getting 49 dot something here? So there's a specific range for each public and private IP in each class. Okay. So we'll talk about that in the next session. Okay. But today, we just need to understand what public and private IPs are. Yeah. A very simple tip to remember. Public IPs are the IPs to access internet. Private IPs are the IPs used in your local network. So in your home network, in your office network, when you want one device to communicate with the other device in the local network, for that you use private IPs. And when any of those devices wants to communicate with the internet, when you want to visit any website like google.com, youtube.com, netflix.com, all those are placed on the internet. So when you want to connect to the internet, you need a public IP for that. Okay, as simple as that. Okay. Exactly, everyone, Johnson, Mastanwali, Naresh, Sumit, Vaibhav, what public and private IPs are. Any questions, any doubts up to this point? Priyanka, Sanya. I have a question. Oh, yeah, Priyadashni, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm a bit confused about like... Uh... And practically, we are using one one Wi-Fi in our home. In with, I mean, using that Wi-Fi only, we are also connecting to the Google.com, isn't it? Exactly. Then how I will, I mean, how I will classify that is public or private? Mm -hmm. Like uh, you said, like using a public IP address, we are able to access the Google.com or whatever in in public uh, domain. Okay. Main, meanwhile, we are also using a Wi-Fi in our home. Yeah, right. Okay. So how it is connecting each other? That's the purpose of the router, right, Riyadashni? So let's no, assume no, no. this is... Oh, yes, I, I understand the purpose. I am not able to connect that private and public IP addresses connecting each other, how they are communicating. Like you said, like uh, my question is, uh, my Wi-Fi is now private. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it's a private network, right? Okay. Using that network only, we are also connecting to, to our browser. So how? No, no, no. So your router, as mentioned, the purpose of a router is to route connections. Okay, so this is your home network here. So yeah. if I show you, this red box is your home network. Let's call this home network here. Okay. And your router is a device to route connections. So it basically has two interfaces. On one interface, it gets a cable from outside your house, okay, an optical fiber cable or something which is provided by the ISP. On that interface, it gets the public ID, something like 1.2.3.4. Okay, so this is my public ID here. Okay, and here these are my private IDs. So it's left, I have three computers in my local home network. Okay, and these devices get their own unique private IDs. So even a router also gets a private ID. So this could get something like 192.168.0.1. Your computer can have 192.168.0.2. This could have 192.168.0.3. And this could have 192.168.0.4. Okay. So let's assume this is my computer. And when this computer wants to communicate with the server on the internet, let's say there's a server here, google.com. www google.com. So this website will be hosted on some public IP again. So this could have a public IP like 2345. Okay. So when my computer here in my home network with a private IP wants to communicate with this server here, the connection doesn't happen directly with private IP. So with this private IP, first it communicates with this private IP. Okay. So from my system's private IP, I connect to router's private IP. And then the router, as mentioned, is a device to transfer communications from two different networks. Okay. On one interface, it gets the public IP. On the other interface, it gets the private IP. So now it knows, okay, this person is trying to access google.com. So then it routes the connection from here, this interface to this interface. Okay. So that private IP connection now changes to public. And with this public IP now, it tries to, oh, sorry, with this public IP now, sorry. What is, yeah, now it's correct. With this public IP now, it reaches the ISP. And from there, it reaches the Google's public IP. So that is what is happening in the background. So your router allows both sorts of connections. Okay. On one side, it is allowing private communications. On the other side, it is communicating with the public network as well. Okay. A router's job is to route 
private to public and public to private connections. Okay. So that's what uh, is happening in the background. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Right. I hope this is clear for others also how these private IPs and public IPs are working. Any questions, anyone? Yeah, that's what broadband is, right? So broadband is nothing but your internet connection, ISP connection. So I'm using ACT broadband connection. Broadband is your internet ISP connection itself. Different terminologies, same thing. Broadband, ISP, everything is same. Is that clear? Right. Are there any questions? Mastan Wali, Naresh, Sumit, Vaibhav, Priyanka, uh, Sanya. Perfect. So yeah, that's that. Nothing further for the session today, guys. So again, a quick recap on what we have learned all the while. So first topic that we started with was what is networking? Okay, so we learned what networking is, we learned what networks are, then we learned what hosts are, okay? And just like how we communicate, these hosts also have to communicate for that, they need IP addresses. So we talked about the properties of IPs, how do these IP addresses look like in the binary language? How do you convert any binary language number to a human readable decimal number? And from that conversion, we got the range of IPs as well. What's the first IP? What's the last IP? And after the range, we talked about the sequence of IPs. So we know first and last IP. What about the IPs in between? So we talked about sequence of IPs. And then I told you that these sequence of IPs, this entire 4.3 billion IPs are divided in five categories again. There's public and private IPs and five classes. Okay. So we discussed what public and private IPs are today. Tomorrow we'll talk about the classes. Okay. What is class A? What is class B? What is class C? What is class D? And what is class E? And what are the ranges and what is the relevance of each class? Why do we have five separate classes? Why not just one class with some public and private IPs in it? It would have made the job easier, right? So you might have such questions. So we'll clarify all that in the next session, okay? And we'll also talk about some important uh, practical assignments, okay? How do you assign a private IP, okay? How does a system get a private IP? How can you assign it yourself automatically or manually, okay? What are DHCB protocols? What is DNS protocol? We'll talk about all these important concepts in the next session in tomorrow's class. Okay. So a very important session tomorrow, guys. Please do join without fail. We'll talk about a lot more in-depth concepts on networking. Okay. And yeah, Priyanka and Sanya, we can exit, guys. We can connect back tomorrow at the same time using the same link at 9.15 my time. Okay. Bye-bye. And uh, thank you, guys. And again, Johnson coming to you, as mentioned, the course price is 8,000 rupees Indian currency, 8,000, okay? And if you have any other queries regarding the price, you can contact the institute as well, okay? So I think in the institute has mentioned their contact number and all that. So if you have any concerns, you can contact their number. I'm gonna drop their number as well in the chat box. One second. Yeah, I've dropped it in the chat box. So again, it's 8,000 rupees Indian currency, guys. Trust me, it was a very low price. I teach for some other institutes as well in Bangalore. Again, I don't know if it's the price, it's the norm there, but they're training. I, I'm the same trainer there also in some certain institutes. And they're training the same core, same content for 15,000 rupees. Okay. In Hyderabad, in the Soft, it's a lot. It's a better price. Okay. So again, we'll be learning all things practically with hands-on. If you have any queries, all these sessions are being recorded and they're uploaded on YouTube for the first week for free. You can access those sessions on YouTube for the first one week only. After that, the sessions are going to be private for the registered students only. Okay. So please do join the sessions. It's very important. As we progress, we'll learn a lot more uh, practical things. Okay. And the course duration is 35 days. We have classes from Monday to Friday every day for one hour each. Okay. So yeah, that's that. Nothing further for the session today. Tomorrow, we learn a lot more important concepts. So please do join the session tomorrow without fear. As mentioned, this whole week we'll have demos, guys. We'll talk about networking. We'll talk about Linux commands. We'll talk about lap setup, lap setup installation. These will all act as demos for you. Okay. 
and from the next week we dive into the hacking concepts okay so much more uh, again a very interesting course practical course no theory nonsense first few concepts fundamentals are theory this is important okay but as we progress things are going to get a lot more practical as well okay so yeah that's that nothing further we can exit the session here unless anyone has any questions Johnson, any questions? Mastan, Naresh, Priya Darshani, Sumit, Vaibhav, any questions? Guys? The duration? 35 days. Ask. 35 to 40. Days. Monday to Friday. Okay, if if we have any doubt, uh, and then we can connect on weekends also? We can definitely. If you have any questions, I also share my personal number for WhatsApp. Let me drop it in the chat box to everyone. That's my number, guys. I share my number with the students. So, you don't have to wait for weekends for your questions. If you have any questions, you can drop it on my WhatsApp number. And I can clarify whenever time comes. Okay. And if you have too many questions and if you're uh, if you think it's not possible over the text, you can connect to weekends as well for doubt clarification. Okay. Okay. So this course also cover uh, the sandbox environment, like how to set up the environment and all. Yeah, we will. So we will be having a lab set of simulation where we'll create our own sandboxes, our own attacker machines, victim machines, and we'll learn how these attacks are being performed. We'll learn how to prevent those attacks, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I did take up a workshop yesterday, Priyadarshan. If okay. you have not attended that, don't worry. That has been uploaded on YouTube, uh, actually. So, yeah, I have not attended that actually. No problem, no problem. Uh, no worries at all. So again, just in case, guys, if you did not attend that workshop, I've explained everything about the course. So I've explained what topics we'll be learning throughout the course. Again, briefly explained the five important steps of hacking cycle. Again, I've uh, again uh, listed out all the uh, different attacks we'll be performing as well. So you can access that recording on YouTube from the official channel of Durgasoft. Okay. So just search for Durgasoft Solutions and just search for cybersecurity. And the latest recording will be the session I took yesterday, the workshop I took yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, that's that for today's class, guys. Any other questions, anyone? Johnson, any questions? Mastan, any questions? Naresh, any questions? Sumit, any questions? Priyadarshini, any questions? Okay. Assuming no questions, guys, perfect. We can exit the session here and we connect back tomorrow at the same time. Bye-bye. Good night. See you tomorrow.